Let me send this one. All right. And you stated you did not wish to make a statement, correct? I will. Ms. Redlich, you testified at trial that you killed your husband, and the jury has found you not guilty of that conduct, and I will not sentence you based upon that conduct. You further testified that after you killed him, you were scared and didn't know what to do, and you froze. And the evidence shows that there were over 10 hours where you waited before you called 911 and gave varying stories as to the cause of Mr. Redlich's death. But you stand before me today for your conduct during the time between Mr. Redlich's passing and the 911 call made on the next day. And, is, and it is that conduct for which you are going to be sentenced today. According to the crime scene pictures and evidence, blood stains were smeared throughout the home. You used bleach and other cleaners to clean what looked like a horror scene. Crime scene photographs also showed where you left the cleanup towels and a bucket of colored water. The blood pattern expert testified that typically blood, blood patterns could tell a story or explain the circumstances surrounding a homicide crime scene like this but not so in your case. The expert also testified that as a result of your conduct, it was virtually impossible to determine the exact circumstances surrounding Michael Redlich's death. The scene was tampered with so much so that the blood evidence was of little to no value to determine what happened between the night of January 11th of 2019 and mid-morning of January 12th of 2019. conduct for which the jury convicted you, tampering with physical evidence, deserves more prison time than you have served, but the law does not allow me to do that, and I will not sentence you to a prison sentence. You have already been adjudicated guilty of count two, tampering with physical evidence, and so for that conduct, I will sentence you to 364 days in the Orange County Jail with credit for 364 days time served. That's going to be followed by a period of 12 months of probation. You will report to probation by 3 p.m. The office is on the seventh floor inside courtroom 7B. Within the first 30 days, you will sign up for and you will submit to a mental health evaluation and complete the evaluation and any required treatment within 12 months. I will impose court costs, and there is also a public defender lien that should be imposed. Court costs of $418? Mr. Parnell and Ms. Conlon, for the public defender lien, what do you feel is an appropriate cost for your services for the trial and the litigation? Judge, she's, she's been in jail for three and a half years on this. She needs to spend her time and resources on rebuilding her life and her family. So we'll be asking for the default to pay her to the $100 for the public defender lien. I'll impose a $300 public defender lien for the services that were imposed or that were provided. And as I stated all, earlier, there are court costs. The clerk will tell you what the total is. Court costs of four hundred eighteen dollars. State fee of one hundred dollars. Public defender fee of two hundred dollars. Clerk fee of fifty dollars, or a total of eight hundred and sixty-eight dollars. For the eight hundred and sixty-eight dollars, you're going to report to the collections court program and set up a payment plan to make those payments. You have thirty days to file a written notice of appeal, or you waive that right. And if you need an attorney to help you with the appeal, let me know, and I will appoint one to represent you. I don't, want to, I don't want to interrupt the court, so. You want to stay cost of investigation? No, Your Honor, I want, to do, I want to address another matter, but I was trying to not stand in the middle of the course. Do you have any questions about your sentence or your appellate rights? I do not, Your Honor. Anything further I can take up from the state? Yes, Your Honor, I, I believe that the, the sentencing order needs to accurately reflect the time served. Um, not, I mean, so it should be however many days with that many days credit. It says 1,228 days. So she sentenced to 364 days with credit for 1,228 days. Uh, 
I, I believe that the, it, the, the proper sentence should be she's sentenced to the number of days she served with the credit for that time served. Defense can, can correct me, but I think that's how the appellate court would expect that's the, the phrasing of that sentence, especially when probation is following and we have more credit than we have sentence. I think that it should be the proper way to phrase it is she's sentenced for 128.28, and she has 128, 28 credit. That's a lawful sentence. Judge, we agree with that. We want to make sure that in the event that this charge is about to be considered as abundantly clear that nobody can take away Ms. Redwood's credit, the same sentence is to her. And no, that she is in no way affirmatively waiving any credit that she has in the event that this consideration is about to be considered. So the sentence would be. Concern is I don't want her to be sentenced to a sentence greater than the 360 days. You do not have the discretion to impose a non-state prison sanction at the time of sentencing. So you are not by giving her by sentencing her to what she's already served, imposing a non-state prison sentence. So we can't. By, I think we, it has to accurately state that she was sentenced to that a number of days and she was, has credit for that number of days. I believe that's the form that the sentencing order should take to, to accurately conform to. And see, I. This is just my recommendation. Sentence is the sentence can't be more than, I, than, than one year. I cannot sentence her to a term greater than 365 days, even though I'm going to give her credit for the time that she's already served. Because that's why you're in that case, then she then she is receiving a prison sentence, even though she's already served the 1228 days. Sentence is what I said I was announcing. I have, I've given my recommendation. I respect the court's uh, reading, and, and it may be a bit um, academic at this point, but that was that's just my recommendation, what I believe it should, the form it should take. But I will sit down and allow the court to. Any comments? Is there something you wanted to say? She's being sentenced to 365 days. She has already served 1,228 days of incarceration. Anything else I need to take up, Mr. Wigman? Ms. Garcia? No, Your Honor. Ms. Carmen, Mr. Parnell. In the event that she does seek to relocate while she is serving the um, probation sentence, does the court have any objection at this time to her transferring probation either out of county or out of state if ultimately that's the decision? Out of state, it would, be, it would require an additional $100 each. And the administration that comes in her door to bring her here, we question if the court has any, I guess, stance on that at this time. Because I think we would have to come back to you later on. And so we just want to get out of here. Um, as far as it relates to transferring probation out of county, the court has no objection to doing that. You still don't need to report. For probation transfer out of state, that's going to be an additional $100 for an administrative fee for that. So if you do decide, then that's an additional If she decides not, Decide to travel or not travel to transfer to another state. When is that hundred dollars going to be paid, or do I need to incur it today? It's due immediately when she makes the request. Um, we can't really collect it because she doesn't have a plan right now. But um, when she makes the request, we need to submit it. And so she would pay that through this. Yeah, she'll, she'll pay that through, through our. 
part of that. Well, it's because you didn't listen to the discussion. Do you know for certain right now whether your plans are leaning more toward leaving the state? Probably not, Ambassador. Probably not. Okay. Well, then let me do it like this. I have no objection to you transferring your probation out of state. The $100 would be due. Um, <coughs> I have no, no issue with you transferring your probation within 24 months. But do understand that can I impose it? And if she never decides within those 12 months to go, that it's just something she doesn't have to pay? I don't think you need to read the order on the probation order. It's an administrative thing that the court has already sent outside the court. So, so I don't have to deal with that. I don't think you have to. I just have to announce it or let them know. You definitely have to announce to make her aware of it if she wants to do it. But you don't have to do it. So, so there. You just know now that you would have to pay that money if you do decide to leave and travel out of, or transfer out of state. That's all for right now, Karen. Thank you. Were we also hearing the motion for return of property? That's already scheduled and docketed for, I think, September, first Sunday in September, um, which is long after the appellate process. And so we already have a court date for that. I think it would take a little bit of time to get organized and everything. So okay. we're not prepared to do that right now. Okay. We need to bump it up to September now. Okay. From the date. The day that it's done, I have a three week trial period beginning the 10th. Am I understanding the 15th? some time during the hearing period to bump it up, but I wouldn't be able to do it until the 10th. All right, anything further I can take it from the state? No, Your Honor.